There is no greater fear an endoscopist can face than the moment a trainee or a member of the nursing staff turns to you and asks you what the different settings on a diathermy machine mean. At this point, you have one of two options. Option one is to mumble the words voltage, resistance, cut, coagulation, spark, um, and then distract everyone with an elaborate joke or some sort of comment on a reality TV show. The second option is to compliment the person asking the question as to what a great question that is, and then encourage them to go away and learn for themselves about the settings of a diathermy machine so they'll remember it, will remember it much better this way. So, if you receive that second response and want to actually learn what the settings on a diathermy machine mean, then hopefully I'm gonna be able to run through some basics today which will help you answer that question yourself in the future. I'm going to focus on the Irby machines as that's most commonly used, and the various settings uh, in particular to do with cutting today. However, I appreciate that um, what I say today will actually work for most diathermy machines. So the first thing you have to select is the mode. And this essentially is selecting between EndoCut Q and EndoCut I. Now this bit's really easy. EndoCut Q is designed for cutting over large surface areas. In other words, when you have a snare. We also use it for some ESD work with the hybrid knives as well. And this can be done for ESD or other submucosal work. Handily, the letter Q looks like a snare, so it's easy to remember. EndoCut I is used for needle knife work and papillotomy. Essentially, we can also use it for small uh, needle-like ESD knives, such as a dual J knife. The letter I, handily, looks like a needle, so again, it's easy to remember. Next thing you have to select is the effect. There are four different effect settings, numbered one to four. The effect setting is you choosing how much coagulation you want there to be in between your cuts. Effect one has no coagulation in between the cuts and effect four has the most coagulation in between the cuts. Now when I say most, what I mean there is the amount of voltage, not the uh, duration of the coagulation. The duration of the coagulation is determined by the cutting interval that I'm gonna speak about later on. Generally speaking, for esophageal, stomach, and most clonic EMR work, you're going to want to select endocut three. However, for the cecum or right colon, uh, you might want to select endocut 1 or endocut 2, depending on your preference. For ESD work, you're likely to reduce that effect down to 2 because what you don't want to do is overcoagulate, which shrinks your submucosal layers and makes it very different, difficult to differentiate the various layers. Of course, you adjust these, uh, these settings depending on how you're getting on and how the lesion's going. I'm not going to talk about ERCP work in this section because this is something I'll leave to my far more esteemed colleague in this area, George Webster. So let's move on now to the cutting duration and the cutting interval. And thankfully here, the machines essentially select it for you. However, it's, it's important we obviously know what we're doing. So the cutting duration is essentially how sharp you want that cut to be. In other words, how long you want that high voltage cutting current to last for. Generally speaking, for almost all EMR work throughout the GI tract, you want the cut duration to be set at one. For some ESD work, we often change that cutting duration to two or, or perhaps three, but again, it depends on personal preference, the knife we're using, using and the lesion itself. Moving on to the cutting interval, this is the time between those high voltage cutting times where the tissues can cool down and we allow that effect, that coagulation phase to happen. The shorter the cutting interval, the less time there is between the cuts, and therefore the less time there is for that coagulation phase to happen. Again, generally speaking, the machine selects this for us, and the majority of the work we do, we want the cutting interval to be set at six. That's pretty much for all EMR work. Again, in ESD work, we often alter this, um, this interval, um, because actually what we want to focus on there is more to do with the cutting, and there to be less pause between the cuts. That allows us to be more accurate. So often we shorten the interval to something like three, but again, this depends on personal preference and of course the lesion itself. So then finally moving on to my last tip, and this is about the pedals. Um, and really what we often see with, with pedals is that there's a tendency for, for people, particularly when they're starting, is to tap the pedal rather than keeping their foot down. Now the diathermy machines are very clever and essentially they monitor the current and the voltage they're producing at all times and therefore determine how long each cutting cycle should last and how long each coagulation should last depending on what the voltage they produce. 
if you take your foot off the pedal and tap instead, actually what you're doing is um, stopping the machine from being able to make these calculations and therefore resetting it back to the start every time. Therefore, holding your foot down on the pedal allows the diathermy machine to effectively monitor how much cut it's producing throughout and when it should stop and move on to that coagulation phase. Additionally, it should be noted that um, when you have a large polyp, sometimes you get that sensation when you press down on the pedal and it almost feels like there's no cut happening uh, whatsoever. Now this is due to the resistance and essentially the machine is not able to get up to the required cut in voltage. Whilst this is happening, however, what is happening is the tissues are desiccating and eventually that allows the resistance to change and allows that cut in voltage to happen. So if you were to take your foot off the pedal, essentially you're resetting it, it never quite gets to that point. So by leaving your foot on the pedal, it allows the voltage to build up and eventually get to that cut point. Second point I'll make about taking your foot on and off the pe pedal is that in endocut Q, that it's purposely set so that the cut voltage increases with each cutting cycle. So what that means is if you're cutting a small polyp, it doesn't give you a huge amount of voltage and therefore overdoes it and potentially increases your perforation risk. But of course, if you're cutting a larger polyp, what it does is it builds up that cut voltage, it builds up that cut sharpness and therefore allows you to cut through those bigger lesions. Now, if you were to take your foot off the pedal in between those cuts, what effectively you're doing is resetting the machine and you're always going to stay on that low voltage cut. So again, stay your foot on the pedal, allow those cuts to build up. The last thing I will say is that in endo cut I setting, there is no increase in that, that stepwise increase in the voltage. It stays at a constant level. So I hope this helped. Um, we'll do another video on the coagulation settings and I'll hand over to my colleague at some point and let him talk about the uh, cutting and coagulation settings for ERCP work.